Hey everybody, it's Cindy, and today I have a quick video for you where I show you how I corrected a problem that really bothers me, which is the gap that shows up between two page layouts. Now I did discover a while back that you could buy We Are Memory Keepers flush bound page protectors, like this one that I'm showing you with the Murphy layout, where the pages are already connected for you. It's a single binding strip where it goes onto the rings, but the two pages sit really flush together so you get that definite continuous look of a two page layout. Now, as you can see, there's absolutely no gap. You still get all four pages, but you're missing that big gap like you get when you use traditional page protectors. This may not be a huge issue for most people. I'm pretty picky about it. I like it when it lays flat and it's really been bothering me for a while. I was thrilled to discover the We Are Memory Keeper solution, but then I came up with my own too. So I'm going to quickly show you two different ways you can achieve that same look using just traditional 12 by 12 page protectors. So here we are at Amazon.com and the page protectors I'm talking about are actually called ring flush bound page protectors. So they go in your regular three ring scrapbook but they are made so that the, as I showed you earlier, so that when you open them, the double-sided spreads, the two-page spreads stay together, so they're flush together, right? So they're still ring-bound, but you get the illusion of the, the way post-bound scrapbooks look without the actual post-bound scrapbooking. I don't know if everybody feels the same way, but those posts really bother me. You either get really super small scrapbooks or you put those extensions on, then they feel flimsy. So I really prefer the ring bound. I think you get more in them. I think you get more interaction with your scrapbooks that way because you can kind of move the pages around and they're easier to manipulate and they're definitely easier to expand. You get more in one book without having the extension posts problem that I run into. And maybe, you know, maybe I'm just picky that way, but it really bothers me. So this is a great answer to that. The only problem with them is that you only get five pages, which is a double page. So you're actually getting 10 sheet protectors per package, which for 952 really isn't a bad deal. You are getting 10 page protectors, but it's 952 where if you look at exactly the same product, 12 by 12, um, page protectors from We Are Memory Keepers, same quality, everything, you get 10 of them for $7.98. It's not a huge savings, but it is a savings. It's not quite $2. So you know me, I'm going to try to find the savings where I can and make the most use of my crafting money. So this is a great way to do it. It's not a huge savings, but you know, $9.52, $7.98, you're getting the exact same thing. It's just this way you have the, if you buy the package that has 10 regular page protectors in there and then only turn the ones that you want to use into two page spreads, then you're saving a couple of bucks. And you're gonna be able to use the other eight or the other four or whatever you don't use as a two page spread, you can use those any way you want to. So the first thing we'll talk about is doing it on a sewing machine. This is nothing new, this is not a new concept. People have been doing this for a while, not necessarily for this particular reason, but to make their own pocket page layouts or you know put in memorabilia that they want to be included but they only want to use half of the page protector so they just sew a line down the middle of it and make a flap that goes with a particular layout. This isn't new and it's really simple. All you have to do is line up those two edges and then run a, a seam right down the edge of the um, first seam. So you want to go outside of the actual space for the paper because you don't wanna go inside that until you know exactly which paper you're gonna put in there. You do have a little bit of room on these on these page protectors, but it's minimal and you don't wanna make one and then discover that you can't fit your layout into it. So I went ahead and ran the seam down along the ins or the outside closest to the, the ring holes and that worked pretty well. I used just basic um, pressure, basic tension on my sewing machine, and a fairly long stitch length. You want to make sure you have a fairly small needle in your machine when you do it. Other than that, it's really simple. I backstitched like two stitches right at the very end, and then I did it at the beginning as well, and it worked perfectly. 
I went really, really slow. I tend to be a really fast sewer when I use my sewing machine, probably why some of my seams are so crooked, but uh, that's neither here nor there. And this time I went really, really slow because I didn't want to make the mistake of going too fast and possibly putting holes in it or ripping it. And you can see, aside from the little threads at the end that I need to snip off, um, it came out really, really good. I mean, it was it was quick. Didn't take me very long, and you get the same result as the flush bound ones that you buy from Memory Are Memory Keepers with a really simple stitch. It's not that ugly. I wasn't, you know, too concerned about it. It doesn't look like it's going to show up very much, and it's really strong. I, I tugged on it pretty good right there, and it, and it really seemed to work really, really well. So that's the first way you can do it. So the next way we're going to talk about uh, achieving that same look is with the We Are Memory Keepers Fuse. Now I use regular standard page protectors. I didn't use the fuse specific ones. Uh, you may get better results if you use the fuse ones than I did here. I didn't have any problem with the results I got. So let's take a few minutes here and talk about the fuse. It's made by American Crafts. It's either branded We Are Memory Keepers or Becky Higgins. I have one of each because one came just with the basic and one came with a whole bunch of extra accessories, which is what I like. But they're basically exactly the same thing, and they're sort of a really awesome version of a soldering iron that you use in a slightly different way. So they come with these really cool little tips. There's a decorative one, there's um, a wheel one, which is what we'll use today, and then there's also one that you use to cut plastic with, and that's I'll show you how to put that one on here. And basically with all the tools exactly the same, you want to use pliers if it's hot, otherwise do it when it's still cooled off and you just go ahead and screw the tips in to the end. You can do it by hand. You really don't need pliers or anything unless you tighten it down too much. And you want to be careful how much you tighten it down. I did learn that. I got one stuck and had to really work at it to get it off. But that's pretty much it. This is the tip that you use to cut through the plastic. I'm going to use the other tip, which is the little ball that rolls. And that one's already hot and they get really, really hot. So be careful. I burned myself once already. Um, that's the tip we'll use today to fuse the plastic together. So they also come with these two little, they come with one each. Um, they come with these little stands. What I found with the stands is they don't stand up very well. So I glued mine down to an old bamboo cutting board that I use for watercoloring. You can see by the back of it that it was really, really um, heavily painted. I go in ahead and glued it down with Gorilla Glue, just wet on both surfaces, put the glue, Gorilla Glue down, push those down, and it stays perfectly. So the other thing you're going to need is the fuse mat or a glass cutting mat. Do not do this on your regular cutting mat. Uh, it will burn it just super quick. So you want to use either the fuse mat that comes with it or you want to use like a tempered glass cutting mat. So I'm going to go ahead and put some washi tape on this to hold it together while I'm fusing it. I don't want it to shift. So I'm going to line it up get it all exactly where I want it and just put a strip of washi tape across it to hold it while I'm fusing it. Once I get it fused, it's going to stay fine. But until I do, I don't want it to shift because those holes obviously have to line up really nice and you want the tops to be lined up. That's all I did is just go ahead and lay it down, flip it over, make sure it's lined up, and then fold that washi tape over. So the only thing I'd really caution here when you're, when you're sealing these together with the washi tape is just to make sure that you don't get too close to that seam line um, where the pocket begins. So right on the top side of the holes in this view, there's that line that, that's already factory created, the seam that starts the pocket. Um, you don't want to get too close to that with the washi tape because you don't want to fuse your washi tape down when you run the fuse tool along, along the side of that line. So just give yourself a little bit of room. And then you can see I, I gave myself very little room, but I did give myself some room to run that washi tape right up that line. So now we'll go ahead and take the fuse tool and in most of the videos you see you want to go not too slow but not too fast when you're using the fuse tool and you want to go in one solid motion. When you're doing this you're going through basically four layers of plastic because the the uh, you have two pockets that you're fusing together, um, two binding strips there with the holes and um, you want to make sure that you're getting through all those layers and as you can see as I'm tugging this apart it fuses really quickly it's simple 
but you want to go back and forth several times so you make sure you're getting through there. Most of the times when you use the fuels tool, they're going to tell you to only go in one direction and go um, very not too slow but not too fast and don't push too hard. When I'm doing this, I'm just running it back and forth. I'm not pushing very hard. I'm letting the heat do the work for me, but I am going back and forth to make sure it goes over and seals really, really well. And once I get this done, you'll be able to see that it was a super simple process. Uh, I didn't have to put any kind of pressure on it. I let the heat do the work and it seemed it perfectly. Uh, you can't see any places where it's gonna come apart and I'm giving it a pretty good tug there when I'm pulling it open. I don't want it to come apart, obviously, in my album. So I'm going to make sure that there's no places. I'm going to run my finger along there and make sure that there's no places that didn't seal with the fuse. And I'm not finding anything where it's not absolutely perfect. So there you go. And now, um, once again, I'm pulling really hard to make sure that's going to stay in place the way I want it to. So now I'll go ahead and take the washi tape off the one that I used for the fuse and then I'm going to put two 12 by 12 sheets of pa pattern paper into the pockets of both of them so that you can see how close uh, this is to matching the flush bound three ring page protectors from We Are Memory Keepers that I showed you earlier on Amazon. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and slide these pages both in the pockets. The first one I'm going to show you is the one that I did with the sewing machine and then we'll go back to the one that I did with the fuse and I really like the results that I'm getting. It seems to be pretty close to what the the flush bound ones by We Are Memory Keepers looks like and you get really similar results. It's a definite improvement over using two separate sheets if like you would in a traditional three ring uh, page protector that you use. It's definitely improvement over that. Now it does have a slight gap and I'd like to close that gap up. So now we're going to go over to the fuse bound one, the one that I used the fuse tool to go ahead and and see and close that up. So I'm going to put two sheets of pattern paper into that one and see how that looks. And then I will go ahead and make a slight adjustment, improve it just a little bit more. I found that I like the way both of them work and I think they look really good, but there is that little bit of a gap still on there that I'd like to seal up. So now we're going to go ahead and fix the little tiny bit of a gap that's left by running the fuse back along the page protector but I'm gonna run on the inside closest to the pages instead of running it on the outside closest to the binding holes so I'm just gonna run the fuse right down that line and I'm going to uh, hopefully close that gap up as you can see I didn't run a second stitch line with my sewing machine down this one and there's still that little tiny gap. It's not bad. You're still going to get the continuity of the double page spread, but I think we can improve upon that using the fuse tool. So I'm going to close up that little bit of a gap right there. Uh, hopefully get it pretty close and then we'll go back and look at both of them again. So I'm going to grab my fuse tool again and once again I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to use that back and forth motion to make sure I'm really going through all those layers of plastic and fusing them together and I'm going to go not too slow, not too fast, and not too much pressure. I'm going to let the heat do the work. And I'm going to do it halfway, flip it around, and then do the other half. I find that works better and I'm less likely to burn myself because that's the way I burned myself the first time. So I'm just going to use that back and forth motion, go all the way up to the place where I stopped before I turned it over, and it fuses really quickly. I am really impressed with this. I hadn't thought about doing this. I was looking for a way to improve the double page spread and I realized my fuse tool would probably work perfectly. I had already tried the sewing machine, which I liked, but I think this is a faster way to do it. And, um, you know, the plastic is already, or the, the tool is already there for you. You don't have to worry about getting the sewing machine out and putting it away. It's just, you plug it in, you let it heat up and you're good to go. So that's my tip for getting great continuity between a double page spread layout. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment below the video. And if you have any, if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Have a good day.